All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us on that one. Uh, if you haven't noticed, there are a lot of League of Legends and StarCraft 2 tournaments going on all over Twitch TV right now. I took the stream offline for just a second, was able to switch over to a not-so-busy Twitch TV server. So uh, hopefully everything will be going rather smoothly from now on. We are going to be loading into game number one. Once again, Pro Caliber League of Legends is going to be your blue team over here with some pretty sweet Full Metal Jace and Bloodstone Tarek skins on top of their Pulse Fire Ezreal and Charred Maokai. And SSTD is going to be down here with... Lion Dance Kogwa, legendary skin of their own, Midnight Ari and Redeemed Riven, or as I like to call her, the Legend of Zelda Riven, because look at her, she just kind of looks like Link, especially when you're looking at her from above, until of course she starts screaming like Xena Warrior Princess, which is just something completely different. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you missed the pre-game uh, the pre -game analysis, uh, I'm sorry, there was, a, there was a lot of stuff I was talking about. One of the lanes I did want to mention was this Tarek Ezreal bottom lane, as Tarek is going to have a lot of different ways to keep his support alive while still being aggressive, that hard crowd control in his Dazzle. He has Shatter in order to increase his a allied AD's armor and reduce the armor of his enemy champions. He is, of course, going to have the heal, which is gonna only going to benefit Ezreal and his ultimate, adding damage and ability power and so much extra stuff to Ezreal's war arsenal. It's going to be really, really awesome to see. And as I mentioned before, Ezreal, of course, has been on the rise because he's extremely, extremely mobile, has a lot of burst damage potential, and he can be safe. If you run Flash and Arcane Shift, and even if you're running Cleanse on top of this with a Quicksilver Sash, Ezreal really can't be locked down in fights whatsoever, and he's an extremely, extremely difficult champion to deal with at all. Or do you see Chimpu actually running Ignite over here? So we could see a very aggressive lane. Exhaust picked up on Tarek as well with the Ignite on Ezreal. Means that they could be Arcane shifting forward rather than backwards to get themselves into some prime positioning for kills. And once again, as I mentioned, that Lion Dance, Kogma, and Nunu lane on the bottom. Popularized by M5, I believe, back at IEM Kiev, if not a little bit before that. Well, very, very damaging bottom lane, of course. Uh, Nunu's Blood Boil is going to give Kogma the attack speed he wants in lane. In addition to a little extra movement speed, as Kogma is not necessarily the fastest champion in the game of League of Legends, but is it going to be enough to compete with the aggression coming out from Tarek and Ezreal? I don't exactly know. Only time will tell, ladies and gentlemen, as we've gotten ourselves into game number one of the uh, Summoner's Rift Amateur League of Legends tournament, once again sponsored by UFC, Raid Call, and Cyber Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, there are brackets online at cyber-sports.net. If you want to check that out, was it detnet.com? I don't exactly know. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, there are brackets available if you check out Cyber Sports. And, of course, we are in game number one here. And a lot of things going down already. SSTD is going to be your red team over here. And we have the blue team of... Um, I actually completely forgot their name. Pro Caliber League of Legends. There we go. Completely sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to have a very, very exciting match for you. We do see that the red, uh, red team is the one defending their jungle. While that aggressive competition from the blue team with the Tarek Sun is invading. They do see Ari over in the bush where Ari is going to be able to get out there without any kind of aggression. They do, of course, have an Anivia Stun possible at level 1. On top of, you know, now Maokai doesn't really want to go for Twisted Advance at level 1. He wants to get these saplings in order to successfully jungle. If they wanted to go really, really balls deep on it, they could have gotten Twisted Advance and really locked down a sword low target from this red side, but they're not going to do this. Jay's actually getting his wall there in order to speed up and slow down, depending if you're an ally or an enemy. So they have a very powerful invade composition. They do not want this Amumu getting his blue buff. I talked about how less useful Amumu will become if his blue buff is not there or not on him. So it's a very, very dangerous thing for the red team. Are they going to be able to get a blue buff? You know, they do have a do actually see the blue team backing off after placing a ward. They're going to know when Amumu wants to go for that blue buff, and they're going to react upon seeing him actually go for it. That will be the trigger. Meanwhile, they are going to just start successfully in their own jungle. Maokai not going to get all the saplings down that he wants to, but still going to get a pretty good leash. Amumu actually going to be a little bit ahead in the experience war right away, because he's actually starting in his raids. Meanwhile, blue team spent a little bit too long frolicking in the jungle and decided to actually start at the blue buff first. So that is either going to stay on one of two things. One, a slower start for Maokai, or two, a little bit more of aggressiveness from that Maokai to try to deny out this Amumu from his blue buff. Amumu did actually start boots and three health potions, Maokai doing the same exact thing. So both these champions looking to be a little bit more mobile in the early stages of the game. Riven and Jace have arrived in their own top lane, mid lane between Anivia and Ari. Ari already laying a little bit of damage onto the bird or the Cryo Phoenix in the mid lane. As I said once again, Ari being a very, very extremely mobile champion is going to have a I'll basically give Anivia a very hard time at doing anything. Ooh, 
A Mumu ganking level 2 with bandage toss? This isn't something you see all the time, especially when he's running that red buff. Maokai must be very confused not seeing anybody buy his ward over here. A Mumu being very patient, waiting for Riven to hit level 2 to get that key strike in order to get the stun down. Jace actually going to hit that level 2 first. Riven going to get it probably in one or two more creeps. There it is. This could be the signal for a Mumu to go in with a bandage toss. Is it going to be in range, ladies and gentlemen? We'll have to see here. Riven, you know, showing a little aggression right there. Jace is playing extremely passive, and this is actually costing a Mumu a lot of time in the jungle. He doesn't have a blue buff. Actually not going in there. There he goes. He's going to go in there. Gets the stun from Key Strike down first. Ignite goes down on top of Jace. Bandit Sauce after the flash. That is a lot of damage coming down. But Jace, oh, we've got to knock Riven back. And they will not be falling right there. So an unsuccessful gank early on from Amumu. They do actually force. Jace does actually not go back. But in the bot lane, we have that aggression on top between Tarek and Ezreal. But Kama already by Hurricane Barrage is dealing a lot of damage as Tarek is going to have to back off and use his own health potions there. Aggressive warning and the enemy side bushes over here as both supports want to gain that brush control and really push some sort of advantage there. Maokai has actually recalled him this time. Uh, it doesn't exactly know what he's gotten back. Gotten a regrowth pendant on top of health potion, but this is giving Amumo a window of opportunity to go in and take his blue buff. His smite, of course, is up. He wasn't really running around a lot. He was just waiting in that top lane for a gang. Riven, though, has a huge advantage over Jace. Jace has had to pop up about all of his health potions. He's popped all his health potions, actually. Whereas Riven has only had to use two of hers. Taking a quick look at the CS. 17 to 12. Riven is pushing a little bit of an advantage over here. Bot lane realizes Amumu is going for the blue buff, but he is going to secure it. And immediately seeing, seeing that the bottom lane of blue team has gone back, he's not even going to stop to kill that lizard. He just wants to get out of there with his secured blue buff. And that is going to propel Amumu back into the jungle state of this game, ladies and gentlemen. So Maokai is not going to be the one with a very, very dominant presence in the jungle. It is going to be a rather even jungler game right here. Jace getting a little aggressive on Riven. He is in that range attack form, so he's, every shot he uses with his Q is going to turn into a bit of an explosion there. Now turning back into his melee form to really combat Riven. Both of these characters actually bouncing off one another. Jace, of course, is a little bit lower in his life total right now because of the early gank from Amumu. Mumu is going to come back here and clear out that lizard. Not actually spying that Maokai is coming in for Ari with a twisted advance in the mid lane. Lands a charm on Anivia, but she is almost dead right here, ladies and gentlemen. There's a beautiful wall right there from Anivia. The ignite goes down. Maokai is actually going to pick up first blood with the Q, and that is first blood of <laughs> for that Maokai. That is a very, very good play. Heads up gank there, and that is the power of an early aggressive Maokai gank right there. So very, very awesome stuff coming out at the beginning of this game. Once again, a little bit of stun and a little bit of harass coming down from Tarek and Ezreal on this bottom lane. Still only level 3 is Ezreal, so we're not going to see if he's had that, getting maxing on the Essence Flux right now. Just securely a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, thinking he's a Terran player like EG Puma. We do see he is going to favor the Essence Flux, and as I said, no mana regeneration on his build at all on his rune pages. It's going to be run completely through Masteries. We're going to see if he's going to be able to keep up some sort of level harass without a Soraka infused in order to do this. We do see back in the mid lane now, Ari coming back with a Vengeance has been able to buy a Doran's Ring on top of Boots and everything else that she had. Anivia is still going to be able to get a little bit aggressive though, even dangerously close to this tower. Anivia did not go back and buy anything whatsoever, so it's very odd to see Anivia being this aggressive on Ari and Ari not actually capitalizing on it. Ooh, look at the massive amounts of damage right there. Critical Strike coming off from the E of Anivia, dealing ridiculous damage to that Ari. Anivia actually does still have her egg form, so she could just be trying to bait Ari right here. There's no mana on Anivia though, so she has to be very very, very careful, and we do see an Amumu coming down from the top lane by his jungle. Going to stop off at Wraith before a possible gank goes down here. Bottom lane, not too much happening. Once again, the aggressive kind of Tarek build. Wants to stay in the brushes, wants the forest Kog'Maw and Nunu back, but Kog'Maw kind of content with that. He has that by Arcane Barrage. He's going to be activating it, getting as many last hits as possible. Still staying at a relatively safe distance from Ezreal. And as I look away, there is a Dazzle going down. Kog'Maw stepping a little bit too, too far. Is not going to take enough damage to fall, though, right there. Nunu doing a really good job zoning out with his Ice Blast. Not letting Ezreal get as close as he wanted to in that engagement. So still, we had a little bit of early aggression. First Blood has already popped in that middle lane over there. Maokai is picking that one up for Pro Calibre League of Legends. But uh, nothing too, too much happening right now. Gold counts, you know, technically Pro Calibre League of Legends has the First Blood gold, so they are ahead. But it's only a couple hundred gold, and you really can't decide anything at these early stages in the game. Interestingly enough, we see an Amplifying Tome in addition to Sapphire Crystal on Anivia. Now, normally this would point to something kind of like a Sheen but I don't think Anivia is going to be getting a Sheen, ladies and gentlemen. 
I really, really wouldn't suggest doing that. Perhaps a tier of the goddess that got the amplifying tome for maybe even a Kage's lucky pick, maybe getting a little gold for 10 action to get a little more advantage over this Ari. Ari, in the meantime, is going for the immediate advantage of those Doran's rings, wants to force something, wants to force kills on that Anivia, wants ganks from her Amuma to do so. So picking up the double Doran's ring uh, build is going to be giving her a little bit of a more immediate advantage, whereas if Anivia is going to be going for a tier of the goddess and that Kage's lucky pick, she'll be going for a little bit more of a later game advantage and just try to snowball her positioning the way she has been already with that help from the jungle or Maokai in addition to the harass and shield to put down an Ari with just by landing some pretty pretty good skills that is one thing Anivia can do is kind of take advantage of an over aggressive Ari player but if she's good enough to predict where Ari is going to go she'd of course land a stun and then combo of her own spells so Ari's mobility is a little bit nullified if Ari's a little haphazard with it this Anivia in the mid lane is doing a really good job actually predicting that we did see Riven and Jace bouncing off of each other once again both champions continuing to get each other to around half health and then nothing else really coming of that one so I'm going to have to keep a quick eye over here. If the one first health, person's health does go too, too low, it could be a little bit of an interesting matchup over here. Anivia, in the meantime, is going to be donated blue buff by Maokai. Ari's not going to be getting it anytime soon because of the denial on Amumu's blue buff. He didn't get it until later on in the game. We're probably not going to see that for about another minute or so for uh, TTSD. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, we have a lot of aggression going down here on Kogma and Nunu. Missing the fact that Anivia was able to pick up a kill on Ari in that mid lane over here. We do see Terry taking a lot of damage from Kogma. Nothing else is going to come of that one. And that is just once again Anivia continuing to catch Ari out of position if Ari like I said if she wants to use her mobility to try to get some sort of advantage in the lane or advantage on Anivia if Anivia can predict it Anivia is going to do it flawlessly and there we go Anivia picking up a kill on Ari that is the second death of Arya this game it's actually only two deaths on her team Jay's getting pretty pretty pushy up here against the tower with Riven Riven kind of going in on there but Maokai not yet signaling the twisted advance does not want to do it in tower range Riven is a little suspicious of how aggressive Jay's is getting but now with their own jungler coming in from the jungle there's a twisted advance Riven's going to be able to get out of where the broken wings combination. Jace is going to knock her back. Nothing too much going to come of it. Ooh, Amumu with a brilliant bandage toss over the wall. There's the curse of the sad mummy and intervention. will pick up the kill on Lippo right there. Now Maokai is in a world of hurt. Puzzle, you are not going to be happy if they kill you right here. Puzzle getting extremely low and the Riven ultimate with the delayed animation on my screen. Sealing the deal for another kill. Meanwhile, in bot lane, we see here that Ezreal is able to pick up a kill on Kogma. Is Nunu going to fall too? No, Nunu is going to be able to get out of there by the skin of his teeth. So a lot more aggression going on in this game. A lot more action, and that's the way we like it, Summoners, now, isn't it? So once again, both these teams continue to ricochet off of one another, keeping the gold count close by that about eight or 900 gold advantage, most of it being first blood from this mid lane. Anivia having her way with Arya. She does have a blue buff. Arya's going to actually have to fall back and farm off of her own rates in or because of this. Anivia just pushing a little bit too hard and farming a little bit too much. Anivia currently 72 CS compared to the enemy Arya's 47. So that is a very, very large lead. Ezreal actually has a 79 creep score advantage to Kogma's 66, which is going to be, you know, it doesn't seem like too, too much, but it is a pretty decent lead to have in that bottom lane, especially if you are going to be one with a kill rather than a death. Do you see this blue buff coming up for uh, SSTD? So they're going to be donating that away to Ari. So Ari is going to have her own blue buff. Anivia is not going to have her for too, too much longer. It's about seven eighths of the way done. So Anivia is going to actually be the one that has to go back, pick up a couple items before combating this Ari with her own blue buff. And up. Uh, there is a ward in the brush over here from Tarek, but Amumu wants to come in for a lane gank. Is he going to be in position to try to get the bandage tossed down on the Tarek? No, they're trying to harass him out of lane right here to let Amumu come into this brush. Now, normally this would be a splendid idea as there is no vision right here, but there is vision in that ward. So ooh, Amumu actually going back a little bit right there. I don't think they like the positioning on that one. Perhaps knew the ward was there. Ooh, a blind bandage tossed over the wall, finds a Tarek, has to burn the flash. Tristan advance on Maokai, who is waiting in the tri brush though, going to land on Amumu and he's taking a lot of damage Actually, Amumu doing a good job of tanking and laying down some damage to despair. Calm on the back lines of the Bio King Barrage. There's an ultimate from Nunu. It's going to pop and hit Ezreal. Ezreal uses his own ultimate right there, but Nunu is not going to go down. Barely surviving right there. Ezreal trying to shift forward and get that Mystic Shot. It is not going to land. And wow, that was an engagement that could have gone very wrong. Is Anivia gonna actually going to try to frostbite over the wall? No. Okay, Anivia is going to walk around. Just try to do this on her own time, but no. Nothing of avail. Ari now coming in from the mid lane as well. And the only people in the bottom lane, or only people not in the bottom lane, or the top lane where Jace has gone back. Bought a couple items right now with double Dorans on top of his uh, Ninja Tabby. Riven in the same, basically the same exact build. Like I said, Jace can build a couple different ways and one of them is very similar to Riven. Riven does, however, have a Vampire Acceptor over him. So he's a little bit more sustained on these trades and engagements, but 
Right, meanwhile over here, Pro Caliber League of Legends, they are just going to go and take a Dragon since they're all right here. They did make SSTD back off, so that led them a little bit of a uh, little bit of breathing room, take a Dragon and continue to push a little bit of a gold advantage. Now 15.2k to 13.6k 13 in their favor despite only one kill up on their enemy of team. Taking a quick look at their gold counts right now, who are the big, big winners on uh, Pro Caliber League of Legends at this point in time? You can see here, Ezreal with about 3.6k gold, Anivia however coming out ahead of him at 3.9 almost 4,000 gold right now because of those early advantages from her mid lane dying Jace is going to wander into a bush and find a wild ribbon right here that's not a Pokemon that you want to be fighting right now Jace is used run away and he is going to be able to zone ribbon out of that just okay so once again just bouncing off on each other nothing too too much going down just a little bit of trades of damage right there, and Jason Ribbon continue to go on their merry, merry ways. Ribbon getting a little bit more aggressive right now. Does she have her ultimate up? She does, so Jace has to be wary. Dodging some skill shots right there. Once going, Ignites go down the other side. There's the ultimate from Ribbon. Ribbon dealing a lot of damage to Jace. Jace needs to try to knock her back. There's a knockback. Jace, don't run into the tower. He's trying to do something, but not going to be able to get out of there. Ribbon on a killing spree now after picking up those two kills from top lane with the aid of her jungler. And that Ribbon is in a very good spot against that Jace. Jace thought he had the advantage. Realized that as soon as she Popped that ultimate, he was in a danger zone and tried to run away, tried to get something happening right there, but it was just a little bit too, too late. Does Ignite being able to tick away damage over time and that let Jace get low enough. The ultimate actually was popped a little early, did not seal the deal on him, but did get him very, very low where all Ribbon had to do was broken wings to Chase and the last one with a key strike finish him off. We do see Anivia picking up a blue buff over here. Bottom lane, though, once again, a lot more aggression going down. Calm actually popping a cleanse there to try to get away. Ultimate's going back and forth. Mystic Shot's landing on Nunu. There's an Essence Flux right there. Oh, man, there's a lot of damage going down from this Ezreal. He's doing a really great job here. Picked up a Pickaxe in addition to his double Doran's Blade. Continuing in advantage over Kogma. As Kogma has a Vampire Accessor for sustain. Ezreal's just going for straight damage. 133 to Kogma's 106. Kogma does have Bio Arcane Barrage. We see him just wailing away on Tarek right there. Look at the Dazzle set up for the ultimate right there there. Pulse Fire as well, picking him up. A very nice kill there. They wanted to go on Kalmon. Nunu thought he could protect. They immediately switched targets and a very, very good job right there of focusing from that bottom lane of Pro Calibre League of Legends. And they net themselves a kill with a very well-placed ultimate and a couple creep kills on top of that. So Ezreal now, 109 CS and 2 kills compared to this Kalmon. 100 CS and 1 death. No kills to his name whatsoever. And that is going to be to the tune of about a 1,000 gold advantage for the AD carry in that bot lane. And that is a little bit of something different. A uh, little bit of a differential right there as uh, we're not even at the 15 minute mark of this game yet ladies and gentlemen and that Ezreal is a thousand gold lead on Kogma. Kogma is of course going to be someone that wants to get into the later stages of the game probably a little more of a protect the Kogma composition going on. Amumu has a lot of CC. Ari can charm and tra chase someone away. Twisted advance into the bush. Maokai with an Oracle's Elixir. That's going to be a very very good thing to give them map presence. Oh and Nivea did not get the wall down in time as Amumu was actually able to flash over the little bit of terrain here. If she got it beforehand and Amumu tried to flash she probably would have flashed in between the two walls and well that would it has just been a very, very bad place for Mumu to be. He did get very, very low right there. Now, we see Maokai continuing to go through this map with that early Oracle's, elix Oracle's Elixir. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But with that early Oracle's Elixir, he's giving his team not only, not only map presence, but map advantage. They already have a kill lead. They already have a gold lead. And they already are running amok on SSTD. So hitting that Oracle's Elixir is only going to push their advantage further. Nunu actually placing many, many wards in this river area already to try to counteract the fact that there's an Oracle's Elixir on the enemy team. He wants to get as much vision as possible before they're gone to make sure that no one is going to be ganking. And this is going to be a little effective for them. Maokai is going to be the one with the Oracle's Elixir, so he's going to be the one roaming around first. So if they lose the wards, they know when to play passively and they know when they can play aggressively, even though they're giving... You're giving Maokai a little bit of gold because of the wards. Vision is never a bad thing to have, even if it's only for a brief moment. Ari, in the meantime, picking up a second blue buff of the game from her and Mumu right there. Mumu with his own Oracle says it'll counteract this. We're going to go into the Oracle Wars, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to turn off the lights on the map with Summoner's Rift. You see right here, blue team still has a decent amount of ward coverage. Mumu did just get his own Oracle's Elixir, but red team completely in the dark. Except for the fact they did see a Maokai wandering in over this bush over here. So Nunu and Kaba are going to play a little bit more passively as they do not want to get twisted advanced upon right there. I want to take a quick chance to comment on Ari's build. Double Dorian's into that Hextech Revolver. Not something we've seen all too common on Ari recently. We've been seeing a little bit more favor, maybe towards an early Death Cap, or even going for an Abyssal Scepter, especially if you're going to be fighting someone with a lot, a lot of damage. And an with the sustained damage for ultimate's going to be very, very... Uh, can't tell, I probably want to get that Abyssal Scepter against. However, oh, Magi's Soul Stealer going down. We actually miss a kill on the bottom lane here. As I was talking about the lane, I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. But Nunu actually getting a caught in between, and Ezreal 
Ariel and a Tarek. Not even using that Maokai there. Ooh, actually a Mumu. Oh, he's in a bad place right there. Another Navy does not like that mummy. Wants to take down the Oracle's Elixir. But surprisingly enough, a Mumu did not want to go back and engage that with an Ari support right there. Fearing the fact that this bottom lane from uh, Pro Calibre League of Legends was creeping up on the mid lane. They did not want to run into any unfortunate circumstances right here. I was completely distracted in the meantime by this Medi Soul Stealer that uh, Anivia has picked up. She did actually turn this into a Catalyst Protector going for a Rod of Ages. Never a bad thing to have. Extra health, extra mana, extra ability power, extra everything every couple minutes. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So Anivia is going to be picking that one up. But the Medi Soul Stealer just speaks confidence from a player like this. She has been bullying around Ari when Ari should be the one bullying her around. And now Nevia roaming around the map wants to get some sort of gank going down on this bottom lane. Look at her all the way behind the enemy tower, enemy turret over here as they take down that mid tower with her just the creeps. Nevia doing a little bit of zoning duty. There goes the, uh, uh, the ultimate going down. Kalma is the target right here. Ezreal ultimate. Ooh, the wall actually made him move in a different direction. Nuna's getting a decent amount of damage down on Ezreal, but here comes Maokai. Nivia tanking through that tower, tanking the damage. Twisted Advance goes down, and Ezreal is going to pick himself up a kill right here. This bottom tower looks like it is going to fall, so two towers net in the span of only a minute in addition to a kill there on Nunu. Kalma's coming back and to just try to farm up a little bit. Ari and Amun will have a ride just a little bit late to the party right here and could potentially be caught out. Maokai with the sapling over the wall does see Ari just in advance lands home because of the war right there there's the ultimate Ari getting extremely low ultimates out of there Tarek is now in a bad place Malachi's in a bad place Ooh, Ezreal actually able to pick up a kill regardless though Riven however has now joined the fray as Amumu and her take down both Malachi and Tarek and now we see Ezreal with the blue buff he's acquired from uh, the enemy team running away right here he needs a flash there's the flash to get away Riven even though you were an extremely mobile champion you cannot catch up with that one so wow that was a very very nice engagement there from Pro Calibre League Legends SSTD, not the worst kind of counteraction of this one, and it is going to actually get them this dragon right here. So that's going to be a little bit of an advantage to keep themselves back in this game. Yep, looks like Anivia is going to spot it right here. Are they going to be afraid of just the Cryo Phoenix? I don't think so at this point in time. But Anivia could potentially steal this with a very well placed Q. Q's on level 1. There's an Ezreal ultimate taking down a Mumu. Too much dragon damage, and a Mumu will go down. There's a flash in a wall. Kalma in a really bad place. Gets the stun off. Ezreal coming in with cleared up, dude is able to pick up a double kill a pro caliber League of Legends is just running camp on SSTD right now that was brilliant execution I've never seen an Anivia be so scary that she zones out an enemy team like that ladies and gentlemen so right now they're gonna net themselves a basically uncontested dragon after taking down the enemy team in brilliant fashion right there so that Anivia that Ezreal I said they were getting a little bit beefy in the beginning stage of the game continuing to spiral those advantages in their favor and spiraling in control for Pro Calibre League of Legends, currently a 9 to 5 cha uh, champion kill differential. 28.5k to 23.1k gold, two towers in their favor. That is a 5.5k gold advantage, and we are only just at the 20 minute mark, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, this is the Summoner's Rift Amateur's League of Legends tournament sponsored by UCG, Raid Call, and the Cyber Sports Network. We have brackets up on the splash screen you'll probably see at the end of the match, ladies and gentlemen. So stick tight if you want to see that. Of course, we also have them available on cyber-sports.net. So if you guys want to check that out for a full bracket information as well. These are best of one series games so after this you know there's no redemption if SSTD loses it or Pro Calibre League of Legends plays the game of throws there's no way for them to come back it is only a best of one so they're gonna have to bring their A game no matter what intervention getting aggressive on Lippa on the top lane Lippa able to knock him back up just a little bit right there and I think that's really what's been saving Jace in these engagements we saw Jace was the Achilles heel for Pro Calibre League of Legends in the early stages of the game as he is already 0 and 2 Riven being 4 0 and 1 those knockbacks I think oh they're giving him a little bit of favor but oh there we go with the broken wings and the key strike. Ultimate has been popped right here. I don't think Lip is at low enough HP for intervention to do anything. He is getting a little bit gutsy right here. Thinks that he can harass a little bit. Rim with the broken wings combo, not gonna find home there. If you got a key strike off and an ultimate, that would have been death right there. Now Mumu coming in. Bandage toss misses. I think that's the first bandage toss I see a miss of the entire game. And no kill awarded on Jace despite the aggression from that top lane of LSSTD. Kama not stealing that one this day, says Ezreal. As he's able to pick up the last hit on stealing the blue buff, the first one that has been stolen all game. They were successful in denying it earlier on to Mumumu, but he still wound up getting it. But now, once again, Ezreal picking up the enemy blue buff, Anivia picking up her own blue buff. Anivia currently two stacks on that Medjai Soul Stealer, something that still perplexes this caster, ladies and gentlemen, as to why she's gotten that one. 
But uh, it's working out for her right now. She has a dominant performance. She's currently 1-0 and 3. Has not died. Has not lost that. But this Ezreal is really the story right now. In these team fights, he is so precise and so deadly. As uh, Chimp 2 has been able to go 7-0 and 0 right now with 148 CS. Compared to Kama, 0-2 and 1 with 139. Ooh, Amumu actually having to flash over the Cryo Phoenix's wall right there. As he was stuck between rates and a bad cold place. So having to get out of there right now. And now, Pro Calibre League of Legends... Positioning over towards the Baron buff. Are they going to be trying to go for Baron? Oh, Maokai and Ezreal want to try to get the jump here on Riven. But she is recalling. So, no, no jump is going to be gotten right there. They're, they could potentially take down their third tower of the game, though. Continue that asserting, asserting of map prominence, or map dominance that they've had this entire game. And we're going to have to see if that is what they do. Ezreal and Tara coming up here to help clear out the lane. Tarek has picked up his own Oracle's Elixir. Um, actually didn't see if Maokai had died and lost his own. Don't exactly know where he is, but they are going to be taking down a tower right here. There's Maokai coming here. Nope, they actually have double Oracle's Elixir, just in case, you know, one of them dies. The other one has a backup one still to continue push this map presence. So that is something they're really wanting to be right here. Jace, of course, with his mobility being very, very good. Key Strike from Riven's going to harass down a little bit right there. Dazzle back from Tarek onto Amumu. And now SSTD is going to have to put up some sort of defense. They don't want to lose another turret right here. Ooh, Nunu, you're going to get caught over here. And there's the wall. The flash are not going to work. It is going to be a fail flash. And feeding Ezreal kills the rest of the team collapses on that very well-placed wall. That is a legendary pulse fire, Ezreal, ladies and gentlemen. The definition of a legendary skin. So here we go. We have, uh, we have once again, Pro Calibre League of Legends continuing to push their, just as a team, five people roaming around the entire map right now. They have all the outer turrets down, inner turrets, inner turrets, inhibitor turrets, and nexus turrets is the only thing between them and advancing to the next round of this tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, catching a move just barely in the corner right there. What a great wall right there. He had no way to get out, and Ezreal once again picking up the kill in that fight there. 9-0-0 zero, zero right now. This Anivia is ridiculous. It's just so much, so many great walls and so many good catches that she's laying down on SSTD right now. It's insane. Riven trying to go in once again, but getting knocked back. There's a flash forward and everything, but now she's taking the brunt of all the damage. Malachi Ultimate goes down. He's taking a lot of damage. All right, we'll pick up a kill on Ezreal, though. That is a huge killing spree to end right there. Riven is going to pick up a kill on Malachi. Jaisal and Nunu right there, but Ari's going to continue the harass down here. Pick up a kill on Tarek. Anivia gets egged. Anivia goes down. Triple kill for Ari, and Riven finishes it off with an eight. That is not what I expected. SSTD went superior positioning in that team fight. They were on the defensive, but that does not mean they were not aggressive. Netting themselves an ace in a four, a five for one right there. That was not, that was completely out of left field. That was insane. And now they're going to net themselves this middle tower. Could potentially take down a second tower. Ezreal is up. Maokai is up. Tarek is the next one up in just a couple seconds. And look at that ribbon just clearing the entire wave with one broken wings combo, though. Bloodthirsty doing her a good amount of work, but they are not going to decide to get aggressive and take that other tower. Even though they have four members up, two to three, they are still a little bit wounded, so they want to be very, very safe. Just trying to steal these buffs. The buffs were down, though. You know, they've already gone, so they're not going to be able to do that. Oh, a little unfortunate. Amumu Banish tosses it, realizes the blue buff isn't there, walks away, and then the blue buff spawns. So, a <laughs> little unfortunate circumstance there for SSDD, but still showing that they have fight to get keep themselves in this game. Closing the gap in the gold by about only 4,000 right now. Still, it's very close in kills. 12 to 10, and 4 towers down for 1 right now. So, like I said, SSTD has the mechanics to get themselves back into this game. It's just going to be, is a Pro Calibre League of Legends going to be able to assess what happened in that fight? Is Anivia going to get rid of that Magi uh, Soul Stealer? And is Ezreal not going to get caught in the middle of everything. That ribbon ran into a lot of damage, but it was all a clever ploy as the rest of the AoE damage from that Nunu ultimate, the Amumu ultimate. Kamo, of course, with his AoE damage on his ultimate as well can get in there. Ari doing a really great job of single target assassinating people, and of course, she's going to have a decent amount of damage as that orb does pass through a lot of people. Foxfire can hit multiple targets. And, well, Riven, of course, is Riven. There's a Baron attempt here by Pro Calibre League of Legends to say, I dare you to engage on this. Maokai pops the ultimate and everything. Kama using the ultimate to get vision. And Nivea's going to try to wall everybody out. Kama's actually in the front right here. Baron is getting extremely low. It will go down. There's an Amumu coming out over the wall. His ultimate is off cooldown. There's the ultimate going down. Maokai will be taken out by a godlike Riven. Amumu is going to flash out of there. Ezreal ultimate will tag him for a kill. But Kama's taking down Jace. Kama takes down Tarek. That's a double kill right there. He is extreme. Nunu gets extremely low as Nivea will take him down. Makama with a triple kill on Anivia. Ari picks up the kill on Ezreal. That is another ace from SSTD. Oh my gosh. 
Riven even still has her Guardian Angel after all that. We thought Ezreal was legendary. 7-0 and 7 on that Riven right now. All of a sudden, SSTD coming out of nowhere. 15 to 14, turning this game around. They said, you got Baron, so what? We aced you, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a tower, another tower, and they are continuing to push this down. Maokai has now respawned. Tarek will respawn. Jace is coming up in just a little bit. This time they want to push. They want to get that extra tower, though. Riven says, I have a Guardian Angel. I am not afraid to go in here and take a little bit of damage and perhaps even die. Well, she doesn't really want to die, though. She doesn't want to pop the Guardian Angel until a team fight right there. So, whew. What a good job of SSTD just coming back into this game. Look at Cogbar right here. He went for a Wriggles Lantern, so he didn't have the uh, maximum potential damage output in the early stages of the game. But picking up that Phantom Dancer, combining that with his Biro Cane Barrage, that is a lot, a lot of damage. And he's just coming out of left field with, with that W. Looking at the team composition for uh, Pro Caliber League of Legends, Maokai, you know, he does have a Glacial Shroud now, so he does have a decent amount of armor on him at this point in time. Even Tarek's you know, Shadow Aura is not giving him enough armor passively on this one. Perhaps an Aegis of the Legion will be a wise choice, but that Frozen Orb, of course, is going to slow down Kalma's attack speed, which does mean that Kalma's not going to be laying down the machine, machine gun type damage that he can potentially do with a lot of attack speed. Jace has decided to go for a Trinity Force after Doran's place. See a lot of Jace is going straight for that Trinity Force anyway. Pro Caliber League of Legends sent. They still got some fight in themselves though. They're going to take down that Dragon and continue to push a slight gold advantage. Not nearly at the 6,000 it was at one point. Nivea putting a wall down there. Not catching everybody but zoning them out because of this. But once again, once again as I was saying, not the 6k gold advantage we saw earlier in the game for Pro Caliber League of Legends. Only about a 3,000 right now. So that is still something, uh, something that SSTD is going to have to come back for even though they're heading kills and barely, barely down in towers, just the overall farm right here from Pro Caliber League of Legends from those early stages of the game is still carrying them to a decisive gold advantage. We're going to have to see how that pans out for them. Maokai actually picking up a Negatron Cloak. I guess he's afraid of the burst damage from Ari. Maybe even a little bit of the damage from Amumu or even just trying to build against the Briar Arcane Barrage of Kog'Ma. Don't exactly know why he's gotten that rather than finishing the Frozen Heart first. We'll have to see what his thought process is behind that one. Anivia has picked up her Death Cap because she's going to be hitting like a truck if a truck had frozen wings. Ari on the opposite side has a Rylai's Crystal Scepter in addition to that Will of the Ancients. A little bit more of a tanky kind of Ari build. I like it though. She's surviving with team fights. She's able to sustain her damage throughout onto targets that she really needs to melt down. And it's so far working out really well for her. Looks like Riven potentially going for a second Bloodthirster, or maybe even Infinity Edge, but has the Guardian Angel on top of her Bloodthirster. We're just panning over it right now. Fully stacked Bloodthirster means a very deadly Riven, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, taking a quick look at the other side, you know, Tarek has a Heart of Gold and a Shrelia's Reverie on top of Boots of Mobility. Interesting choice for the mobility on that uh, support character. Whereas we look at Nunu, Nunu has Mercury Treads to reduce his crowd control, but has not picked up any kind of team fight oriented items yet. Still re relying on that Philosopher's Stone and Heart of Gold for his sole items in this game. There's a Shrelia's Reverie from Tarek with those Boots of Mobility. Wanted to get engaged out on Ari. If he got the Dazzle off, Ari was going to almost have to have to pop an Ultimate or a Flash to get out of that one. So a little bit of a, a wise heads up play by Ari, but just like immediately backing up right there as she is going to keep herself safe and keep her team in this game uh, for right now. But still, Baron is going to be up in just a little bit, probably another two minutes or so if I had to give a rough guesstimate myself. And that is going to be the next point in contention. If another team fight happens at Baron and one team gets aced like they did before, that could potentially just be GG right there, ladies and gentlemen. So like again, we saw Pro Caliber League of Legends having such a dominant early game completely wiping the floor with SSTD. Then they go towards the middle, uh, middle inhibitor right here. Get this tower extremely low. Riven runs in the middle of Everybody, like, Riven, what are you doing? And her team gets a 5 for 1 ace. And uh-oh, here we go again. Riven running in, taking down Ezreal immediately. Ari picking up the kill there with the ultimate. Jace is caught out of position now. Has to burn the flash. They have him on the back, but Anivia Wall will save her team right there. But Maokai is zoned out from the rest of the side. Gets hit with the combo ultimate. He's been tagged. He's like a, a, an animal release back into the wild that the scientists want to find. And he's doing a good job of leaving him away from the rest of his team. But he is going to fall. And if Baron respawns shortly after this, that is almost certainly going to be a Baron for SSTD coming out of nowhere from behind to come back and now close the gap to a 2,000 gold. Actually, less than 2,000 gold advantage for Pro Caliber League of Legends. 17 kills to 14. They are still down one tower by a score of 4-3 to three in favor of Pro Caliber LOL, but still 
excellent job of staying in this game. They had the deny of their blue off early from the jungler, but they've built up and sustained themselves, keeping Callball alive in fights, catching people out of position. They're continuing to push these minor advantages into really, really big ones. Call went out with a BF sword. Is going to be going for that infinity edge, but the coup de gras on his build and his maximum damage potential will be picking up most likely a last wish for after that to seal the deal. We do see on the opposite side though, Ezreal still 10 3 and 2 is not a bad thing. This combo is only 3 2 and 8. So Ezreal is, you know, going to be a bit more of a carry right now. In Phantom Gans, on top of Phantom Dancer, has his extra pickaxe right there. So he is going to be going for that last whisper as I was talking about. That is just so much damage potential on Ezreal. And he has the mechanisms to keep himself alive in these team fights. He just continuously is getting caught out of position by very well placed Riven stuns. And oh, Mumu, turn around and hit that ward. There we go. Picking up a kill on the ward to deny themselves a little bit of vision. You know, Baron? Nope. Kind of lied about it. It hasn't been up in the next two minutes. I guess, you know, since nobody had the buff, we weren't able to get an accurate timer. Riven is now the one getting caught out of position. She's not able to go over that wall. Riven, you're going to expend your Guardian Ninja right there. Look at the damage going down, though, as Tarek has to flash out of there. AoE damage coming down. They're all standing in an Anivia ultimate, but Cobble comes in, dealing so much damage from the back row. Picking up two kills right there. Ari chases down Ezreal. Riven in the middle of everything after the Guardian Angel pops is going to persevere through this one. Anivia is the only one left alive for Pro. Caliber League of Legends, Kama wants the kill, gets walled off, eggs Anivia. Now everybody from SSTD is so low. Kama wants to pick up the kill, but he is going to have to wisely back off right now. Because if there is one champion that could take down everybody charging her at very low HP, it's the R ability from Anivia. So even though SSTD gets a really good fight, they aren't able to really push any tower advantages like last time because they all are extremely, extremely low. And wow, that curse to the side mummy did more work than I thought it did. I thought SSTD was in a very bad position standing in that Anivia ultimate. Nobody died though. They were able to actually take away the targets from the fight that they wanted to. Ezreal was doing a really great job of running away, like I said, trying to reposition him in a team fight. But when Ari is sticking to you like glue, even if you're Ezreal, Ari is probably the one champion that can catch up to you and pass you. You. It's like one of those scenes in a movie where one guy gets knocked forward like from a punch and the other guy runs next to him, like waves at him and then runs in front of him then punches him back the other way. That's pretty much what Ari can do to Ezreal at this point in time. So Ari continuing to be the assassin she needs to be and not the assassin that the people deserve is going to be focusing down on Ezreal and doing a really great job of taking him out of these team fights. And now... All of a sudden, Pro Caliber League of Legends find themselves within a couple hundred gold differential. So very, very great job by SSTD. Taking every single advantage that they can, pushing it out right now, it is about 300 gold. So absolutely nothing in a large grand scheme of things right here. Four towers to three still in favor of Pro Caliber League of Legends. They are the ones baiting out this Baron buff right here. Meanwhile, SSTD on the opposite side, 21 kills to 15 in their favor, and they do not want to go in here without their Riven and their Ari. But Riven and Ari just pushing this mid lane with a pretty decent sized creep wave, trying to make people fall back and get them out of position. That's going to cause Ari to jump down on, say, that Ezreal and chase him away. Riven is going to continue just to run into everybody. She has to be very careful though because her Guardian Angel is down. It won't be up. It's not even halfway cool down yet. So she's going to be able to the one that's going to try to zone out right there. She's going to be careful. Lucic Nuna getting caught a little bit by a wall there. Is actually going to get stunned by Anivia. So now they're going to have to fall back just a little bit. It is not. It is looking, you know, very, very dim for uh, Pro Caliber League of Legends. But still, they have the advantage technically. They've been in the lead the entire game. They have, you know, the Magi Soul Steal are at six stacks. Anivia has that Bloodthirster going now for potentially a Void Staff. They are going to get this Dragon to give themselves a little bit more breathing room with that gold advantage. Ezreal is 10 and 4. Kama is only 5 and 2. So it's not like Pro Calibur League of Legends is behind. It's more like this game has evened out a little bit. The thing is with Pro Calibur League of Legends, they've been basically just hanging around and they've been getting caught out of position. They do love these kind of pushes right here. Moving as a team of 5, especially when this Baron buff is up in here for the taking. But they need not to get caught and they need not to get trapped in this Baron area like they did in the first fight. That is how SSTD has been taking these team fights away from them. And this is how they've been clawing their way back into this game. Just clearing out some uh, vision from wards over here and then recalling. Don't know if I agree with this one right here. If they clear out the wards and recall, you know, the rest of SSTD goes over here to check, places a new ward, realizes no one is there. That is a Baron attempt right here. Kama is going to just use his ultimate right there. Well, checking the bushes, checking to see nothing. Checks and sees nothing. What is going to be the response from SSTD right here? I guess it's going to be to farm rates. So. 
Not going to be going in, taking the bear. There's the ward. Realize that nobody is over here. Now, instead of, you know, what uh, what some people would do and identify this as a team has recalled to buy items, and we should maybe go for a very quick Baron attempt, especially with a Riggle's Lantern Kogmoth shredding away on the, on the beast, they're actually going to be like, well, I don't know where they are. We're afraid of going back behind this game after we work so hard to get ourselves back into this position. We're going to back off. We're going to play it safe, and we're not going to go in there without knowing exactly where they are. And now here it comes, you know, Pro Caliber League of Legends showing their face once again, clearing out the wards. And what is this net SSTD? Well, it's net them their lives, and it's net them being able to hang in this game. A very, very close one now as we approach this 37 minute mark. Here comes Pro Caliber League of Legends continuing to clear out wards. SSTD is not that far off. They're going to be taking their red buff over here. Don't exactly know if Jace could get vision from that one. I don't think he saw anything going on over there. But if he did, he'd see five enemy members of the team. Uh, standing in a bush, ready to jump down on this dragon if anything happens. Terra is going to get tagged with the Kogma ultimate so they know what's going on. Do you see that the ward has been placed over the wall? And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the dance of death around Baron. Everybody's least favorite point of the game. One of my highly, highly anticipated parts of the game. It is so tense. The first person to make the wrong move, the first person to think they're stronger, is going to be the one that could potentially pay for it. And here we go. Pro Caliber League of Legends sees that. SSTD has gotten themselves out of position for this. Wanna wind up going into that mid lane. They do get a nice wall off over here, but it wasn't even needed. They were so far behind. They take the Baron buff. Amumu did not want to engage there. He wanted to engage down on an enemy Baron buff team. That would have been a very bad spot, especially because he would have been left all alone from his bandage toss and not be able to catch up with every not having everyone else catch up until later on after he is say dead. So very nice, um, very nice recognition of what was going on from SSTD. Pro Caliber League of Legends react, take the Baron buff, and now they have the advantage. Not only still in a slight gold lead, this was 300 gold, but between the Dragon, between the Baron and the dance everybody was doing, now Pro Caliber League of Legends has asserted basically a 2.5k gold advantage for them. They are still down by 6 kills, but they are up by a tower. So right now, you know, just take a look around the lanes. You know, this bottom lane is pushing a little bit further for them. Mid lane is relatively even, but top lane is pushing a little bit further for SSTD. So we're going to have to see what is going to come of this game and how these teams are going to react. And once again, this is basically, you know, after first blood and maybe after the second kill right here. SSTD a little bit on the back foot, but they are down but not out. Ooh, a little bit of a reset on this golem here, so Ari's going to have to expend more of her spells than she wanted to. A smite going down from a Mumu is a little bit of a pat on the back there to help her out, so... Ari will eventually pick up her blue buff. Uh, Nivia has her own blue buff here. Now with that Void Staff. Let me see a Chain Vest. Is this going to be a Zhonya's Hourglass? Or is this going to be a Guardian Angel? Either one would be very effective items for Nivia to get. Of course, Zhonya's Hourglass would probably put her around the 800-something ability power mark. Whereas Guardian Angel means that they have to kill her three times. Which is just super, super annoying for them. They do have a lot of mobility though with Jace and his, uh, his gate just running around the map. Continuing to push advantage as a team. However, where's Ezreal? Ezreal lagging me hunting a little bit. There we go, Ezreal. You are going to catch up. You do not have your last switch for an Infinity Edge on top of your Phantom Dancer. Call one in the meantime being zoned up behind this wall. Ooh, look at the Ari taking so much damage. She needs to get out of there. Oh, she's actually taking another J shot to the face. So that's very, very bad right here. It looks like SSTD might have to give up this uh, tower here because Ari is now backed off. And if our. Uh, uh, if Pro Calibre League of Legends decides to engage right here, then that's going to be deadly for them. So wisely backing off this tower, giving it away, especially because the enemy team has Baron buff. Ari had not been caught right there. It would have been a completely different situation and a completely different fight for a completely different day. But we do see that uh, Pro Calibre League of Legends takes a small victory and immediately falls back. Now ever increasing the goal lead from 2.5 to 3.2k. So they're going to continue this little bit of a five-man roam around the map. Baron buff taking the timer on that. They still got plenty of time, ladies and gentlemen. It's not even three quarters done yet. So now we're going to go to do the same thing on this mid lane. The mid tower, as they ping, is extremely low already. This could be the last stand for SSTD. They really want to defend this now to the bitter end right here. Poke is going out. Ezreal is going to come here and get that. It looks like a bandit toss from move. It's going to find a target. There's a curse to the side. Mummy Riven goes in on everybody as well. Nunu with the ultimate. Ari chasing down Ezreal. Ari's caught. Ezreal's caught. So much damage going on. No one is died yet, but Jace will get the shutdown. Kama takes out Anivia, though. Riven with the Guardian Angel actually still up. Jace is able to pick up a double kill in this fight, though. Ezreal takes out Amumu. Tarek is extremely low, but able to get out of there. Now Kama flashing forward with a cleanse from behind. Ezreal is still alive. Ari could not take him down. He's dealing all the damage, and it looks like a fight goes in favor of Pro Caliber League of Legends. Everybody from their team is low except for Maokai, but everybody on SSTD is dead except for Riven. They do technically have to kill her twice, but if you die with a guardian angel and you're surrounded by enemies, well, you're going to die extremely quick after that one. 
So even though they have a 22 kill advantage, a team fight does not go their way because Ari cannot burst down Ezreal. Very interesting position from Ezreal. Rather than running away and letting Ari single him out, runs in the middle of the entire team fight. Ari's skills start hitting everybody else instead. He's able to live with a little bit of HP, then escape, and through the support of his Tarek and his lifesteal, able to get himself back up into this one and chase Kalmar down from behind, not even realizing he was still alive. That is the fight that Pro Calibre League of Legends wanted to win. That is the fight that Pro Calibre League of Legends needed to win. And now, taking that Dragon, their Baron buff is now down but they have the advantage they need to continue to push this game in their favor. 64,000 to 56.6k gold advantage for uh, Pro Calibre League of Legends. Now they've even up the kills a little bit closer. 19 to 22 still in favor of SSTD. Six towers in favor of three though for Pro Calibre League of Legends. And once again, now after, after SSTD clawed their way back in this one, fighting tooth and nail, taking some really, really good uh, fights at Baron and some really, really good team fights, now find that the team fight is the one leaving them a little bit behind. And this is kind of where, kind of fallen to where they were before right now. They just, they need to have another team fight go their way in order to get themselves back into this one. Because right now, just judging by the gold and the huge differential that has been able to swell back and forth after that one team fight in the Baron and everything, I just think that it's safe to say they are technically behind at this point in time. I want to check out Kalma's items. He does not even have his last whisper yet. He does still have that, uh... Riggle's Lantern, which is something Ezreal does not have. However, looking over at Ezreal now, you know, he has a Vampire Acceptor. He has a Guardian Angel on his own. So he is not going to go down easily. He is actually going to wind up getting a Bloodthirst to seal off his deal. And that is going to be a very, very powerful and very, very deadly Ezreal to try to deal with. Whereas Kama still left a little in the dust on that item build kind of there. So that is going to be a testament to Ezreal's 12 kills. So ladies and gentlemen, everyone who thought that Ezreal was a little bit down and out towards the mid stage of the game, you are not going to be down and out when you have a legendary spree at basically 20 minutes into the game. But now they're going to continue to push a little bit of their advantage, take out the remaining outer tower for SSTD. Mid lane is naturally pushing because they have the super minions in there. They're going to want to pressure another lane while this is going on. Ladies and gentlemen, we could potentially have the last stand of the game in this top tower right here. We do have a lot of minion waves being cleared out by the Nivea, but still the rest of the power from Amumu's Tantrum and Cobble with his rain spells able to contest the minion clearing power. There is another sapling being tossed over for the wall from Maokai right there. Help me! As he's actually been thrown into the line of fire. We'll actually tag a little bit of damage. There's nothing too, too much coming out of that one. Look at this, just poking away on the tower, taking a little bit of damage and backing off. They want to get this tower down. The more time they waste right here, the more time their mid lane has to naturally push it now two super minions as soon as someone goes down there to try to defend it that is their key to go in and poke the tower down they get the tower down that is the key to engage if the enemy champion tries coming back they can either disengage with the Shirelia's reverie double Shirelia's reverie actually from Tarek and Maokai or they can just continue the fight if they take someone down in the 4v5 then that just means that they're going to have a 4v5 again when the person from the mid lane comes back Nivea while singling on Amumu now Riven and Amumu separated curse of the side of mummy tags Tarek in addition to Maokai Jace going in to knock everyone back Amumu takes a lot of damage Nunu stepping forward with the ultimate gets a full pop on that one looks like Tarek is going to get extremely low but Riven will actually fall right here Ari is able to single out Ezreal Ezreal will not die though excellent positioning and the guardian angel will save him there looks like that Riven is however going to continue to press this issue. She is going to fall to Ezreal as well. Jace and uh, Nivia in the meantime are taking down the inhibitor. Amumu and Kalma were completely zoned out of that fight by Jace. Excellent job by him coming in there in the melee form. His own Guardian Angel as well. Kalma gets stuck through the wall, pushed to the other side, but still, that is a 3 for 1 in favor of Pro Calibre League of Legends. Now pushing down onto the Nexus turrets. Malcolm Ultimate goes off. El Amumu getting knocked back all over the place, flashing into his own death there. Anivia picking up a kill right there. That is another Nexus turret down. The Nexus is going down, and with the Medjai Soul Seal at 13 stacks, Pro Calibre League of Legends will take down SSTD and a very exciting game. Finally leaving up the kills right there, 23 apiece. Big props to both teams right there as Pro Calibre League of Legends will be the team advancing into the next round of this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are tuning into the Summer's Rift Amateur Cup sponsored by Unified Com Gaming in addition to Raid Call, of course, Cyber Sports Network as well. If you want to check out these brackets, they are at cybersports.net. You guys can tune in and see. Uh, looks like SSTD will be eliminated. These are best of one matches. So Pro Calibre League of Legends advancing into, I believe, the round of 16 is that what we're going into just double checking right here we are going to be going into 
Yep, that is uh, that was round of 64. So we're actually going to be going into the round of 32 for their next game. Then, it's, of course, the round of 16, quarterfinals. And then, as you can see on the screen, from the semifinals, Amran, my buddy in prime, Four Court Jester will be taking over the stream. So that means you still have at least three games with me, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned. We're going to be getting the round of 32 going on very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more awesome Summoner's Rift Amateur Cup action right here on Twitch TV slash Unified Comp Gaming.